Now, before this video begins, I'm going to be doing something different that I don't normally do with my other videos. Throughout this video, you're going to be noticing a few of KSI's tattoos pop up on screen. When that happens, that is when the guy is contradicting to what he's actually supposed to be standing towards. So, throughout this video, enjoy the show. KSI, as many as you know, is one of the UK's biggest YouTubers. He had built his career from being a young lad that played FIFA in his bedroom. Now, KSI was one of the first YouTubers to inspire me to make my own content on this platform. But as the years go by, myself and many others are starting to see KSI for the egotistical man-child he really is. Something that KSI never really shied away from is the fact that he had a huge ego. There have been times in the past where KSI's ego has come across as malicious. A good example of this was with his beef with Ricegum back in 2020. Ricegum, while being a delusional dumbass himself, decided to go on to Drama Alert and state that in his opinion he makes better music than KSI, which is completely fair enough since he's talking about his own music and he is allowed to like big himself up when it comes to his own music. But because Ricegum said that his music's better than KSI, KSI's response to that was to cry about it and watch his own music and gas him himself up. Now, KSI does make better music, in my personal opinion, but you almost want Ricegum to make better music due to how pathetic this video really comes across. Now, if you ask me, Ricegum is also a pathetic little bitch, since he decided to cry about KSI unfollowing him, but for Rice to have the opinion that he makes better music is valid, since as a music artist, you need to somewhat believe in yourself, as cringe as that sounds. It's like me saying that I know I'm a better creator than Cluster and Narcolept. While that is technically an opinion and a fact, I'm allowed to believe in myself, guys, come on. Now, the, one of the biggest things to come from this drama is the fact that KSI stated that Ricegum received 50k for the diss track they both did on KSI's channel about Bazinga. Now Ricegum claimed on the drama alert that KSI hadn't actually paid him and that he never expected to get any of the money since they were just friends. But on KSI's 30 minute video he went on the record and stated that he was paid and that Ricegum is lying about not being paid. But uh, I'm pretty sure it was 50-50 and you got paid. You got paid for the track. I think you're still getting paid for the track. You never said, nah, it's cool. I paid you, my nigga. Now, just after hearing that, Ricegum actually had a seizure in one of his videos after hearing that. You never said in the future, just give me- ah! This dude paid me, you never paid me. I didn't make a cent off that song. Whoa, this dude is a liar? Ricegum was actually able to provide receipts in the video to show that KSI was actually lying about the entire thing. Intentionally or not, it comes across really stupid that he didn't even know that if he paid someone, that was on a song with him. Homie KSI said, yo, you need to reply to this boss. Look at this email screenshot. Lewis Rebecca, keep that in mind. I'm switching camera. All right, I'm on my email. I'm typing in Rebecca, right? That he said, click on Rebecca. KSI Future Race Cup Earthquake, here we go. Um, I'm writing to clear your performance to KSI track. He told me to like email this person back and sign something. Would you be happy to move forward on the gracious swap basis? Uh, which basically means I would be given the option for KSI to record a feature on one of my tracks. Now KSI's response to that was to just give him the $50,000 to make up for it. Which is kind of strange since he clearly is missing the point. It isn't the fact that he wasn't paid, it's the fact that KSI lied and said he was. I find it funny that he believes it can all be okay if he just gives him money, rather than just giving him an actual apology for spreading misinformation. Alright well, the best way to settle this is to give you your money, so I will give you 50k. No KSI, it isn't. Saying sorry I was wrong would be better. This is a pure example of KSI's huge ego getting in the way of doing what is actually right. And obviously Ricegum denied the money, because he knows if he was to take it, by default it gives KSI the dominance in the situation. Which is kind of shitty and I think KSI knows this. I think Ricegum does somewhat have some self-respect, so if he was to take the money he's just kind of shattering that. As many of you know, KSI has become one of the biggest YouTube boxers of all time, starting with his fight with Joe Weller in 2018, then going on to his second fight that same year with Logan Paul. In May of 2023, KSI had fought a professional boxer that goes by the name of Joe Ford. Now from watching this fight, I can say personally I can see that he was definitely dominating him in the ring and was winning. KSI was clearly the better boxer that night and many people saw that within the actual fight. However, towards the end of the fight, KSI had accidentally hit Joe in the face with his elbow. Now this is something I personally think was an accident, there is no way KSI would intentionally do an illegal move. Even the commentators while watching the fight clearly state that it was an elbow. Oh! Oh! Was that a bomb? Damn! Was that a- Oh! His eyes rolled back and everything. Oh. Let's see what connects. Right hand to the body. In the clinch. Oh, oh, oh that may have been an elbow. 
Wow. wow. In a post-fight interview, we see KSI be asked a question on what his opinion was on the elbow hit. Before KSI could even respond, the co-founder of Misfits Boxing, Calais, decides to tell KSI, let me handle it, and just shuts down the question, which just shows how they most likely think themselves that it was an elbow. In my opinion, if I'm completely honest, it does look like the elbow landed before the punch. But as I said, Joe Cornier did walk past. I think he wanted to say to you that you didn't win clearly. I didn't hear it correctly. Guy, Kale, Mount Law, if Joe wants to, uh, you know, go to the commission and, and have a word with that, he's going to get a about that or But let me just quickly take that. Uh, you're a boxing reporter or what's your background? Yeah. What's your, I've never I've never seen you at a boxing press press conference before. Yeah. So let me ask you a question. What angles you seen? I can show you. Yeah. You you show me afterwards. But let me we we've we've answered the question on it. There's there's one angle I'll give it I'll give it to you totally right. One angle looks like a straight elbow. Absolutely. But there's also the key angle. If you look at behind the head, that's the angle that you look at at the commission. That's the angle where you see which which part when the head moves if the head moves then clearly there's impact Are we agreed on that so look at the angle from behind the head so thank you for the question that's more questions to joe fournier if he wants to put in a protest i've heard they they're they're going to if they do brilliant that's down to the commission but we'll just talk about the results tonight in the future, please. To me, that just comes across as so embarrassing, like you're telling KSI to shut up and be quiet. You can talk for him, like you're his bloody dad. He later explains in the video how it wasn't an elbow due to the angle being in Joe's favour. To be honest, to me, it just sounds like cope. And all you really need is eyes to see it for yourself. The fact that KSI is in this much denial about it just makes him come across as a liar. Since most people that have watched this fight aren't blind, his ego doesn't allow him to see that the outcome is in any other way that isn't in his favour, even when it is spelled in black ink in front of him. After after Joe's appeal on the fight, he was able to turn the fight into a no decision, which is a huge deal, and I'm glad that some people in control were able to see what actually happened. Not everyone is a KSI yes man, and that is good to see. Wade Plemons is a YouTuber that mostly focuses on the YouTube boxing side of things, and has been involved with Misfits Boxing, and has actually worked with them in the past. This all changed one day when he decided to make a video talking about why he doesn't think a KSI and Jake Paul fight would sell as well as a Jake Paul and Tommy Fury rematch. This one opinion he had was enough to make KSI go crazy on Twitter, saying this. Man. Fuck Wade. This man acts like he knows everything about boxing. He doesn't know shit. You're not that guy. Can't believe Sharky let this snake into my box. Fuck off. This Wade guy plays all sides, trying to please everyone. You are so fake, oh my god. Fuck you and everything you stand for, you two-faced cunt. One of Wade's main reasons for coming to this conclusion is because he was showing the statistics between those fights in comparison. He shows that the Jake Paul fight had more paid per views than the KSI and Logan Paul fight did. His opinion shouldn't even need statistics to back it up since he can think what he likes. This is unless you're going to against KSI's ego, then we all have to deal with some trouble. KSI's manager Mams decided to confront Wade on this on a public Twitter space and he basically just fired the guy from Misfits because he shared his opinion. We'll put on a, a proper bet that that shit does way more than Tommy yep. Fury, Jake. 100% guarantee that. The thing is though, you guys act like I want this to be the case. You're like, yes, Wade wants Jake to do crazy numbers. Has anybody wanted Jake versus KSI more than me? Who has built that fight more? Anyway, how fun on Kingpin, Wade. Thankfully, the majority of people saw the mistreatment towards Wade, and they had decided to go against KSI and Mams, to the point where the two actually had to apologise to Wade publicly on Twitter. It's a shame that this was all just damage control, though, and wasn't actually genuine. KSI does go into detail in a video that he went against Wade because his source of information was wrong about him. So whoever was feeding KSI this information about Wade had either lied or just exaggerated, or KSI is lying. And since it hurt the ego of KSI, KSI went after this guy's image. KSI had made a tweet saying that he had spoke on the phone to Wade, and they had settled the drama. Wade was also invited back onto Misfits, but denied the offer since the guy probably had self-respect. He also decided to join another company in the same industry called Kingpin. So to be honest, I'm actually really happy for the guy, and he was able to find another place that actually would take him in and hopefully respect him properly. And hopefully KSI has nothing to do with that company, so if Wade, you know, sneezes in KSI's direction, he doesn't get, like, the boot. Now KSI really met his match with his fight against Tommy Fury. I say this because this was the first time he had actually lost. Before the fight actually happened, KSI had made a bunch of videos hyping himself up against Tommy. And I don't know if this was actually supposed to scare him, but... Eh. Soon you will face reality and it will hurt you. You will be a disgrace to the Fury name. And your boxing career will be destroyed when I'm done with you. You don't want this as much as I do. You don't need this as much as I do. No pressure, Tommy. I'll see you soon.
<laughs> this isn't the first time this has actually ever happened. He has actually been on many tangents where he just speaks like an utter idiot and says the first thing that comes into his head. You don't remember, you don't remember You're finished. Stop You're finished. I am the nightmare. K S I. I'm the one that can see John Cena. Yeah, I'm the one that knows Victoria's Secret. I'm the one that knows what the dog is doing. You know, I'm that guy. I'm him. When I go into a gym, treadmills do push-ups. So after KSI lost to Tommy Fury, fair and square, it started to come apparent that KSI simply couldn't handle it. He'd actually made Jake Paul look like the mature one in the situation since Jake Paul had actually lost to Tommy Fury as well and was in good sport about it. I think this was one of the first times that a KSI fan could actually see that he doesn't stand by knowledge, strength or integrity. We can see him kicking TV screens because he's agitated that he had lost. KSI then also made a video onto his main channel called So I Lost where he talks about in the video how Tommy may have won the fight but the guy still sucks. KSI begins his video by showing a bunch of clips of people saying that they thought KSI had won. This is so he can prove that he won, in a way, because people are assuming that he did win. This is just a massive sign of cope, and it's kind of sad to see, to be honest. KSI claims that even his biggest hater, Jake Paul, had stated that he thought he had won, and even proceeds to show a tweet of Jake saying, Straight trash. That wasn't boxing. Only wins on point deduction. Neither man knocked down. So not only from this tweet does Jake not even say KSI won, he also decided to diss both of them. And KSI took this as well, Jake Paul saying that he should of one. Yet again, this is either KSI's informer being a complete idiot or KSI being a complete idiot. Jake even made a tweet saying KSI shouldn't have won the fight due to him using his elbow. But he isn't done here. KSI began to suck himself off for a couple of minutes to show how great he truly is. Six years of just non-stop grafting. Now don't get me wrong, it's it's been fun, but it's also been a lot of hard work. 2017 was the year the diss tracks happened. 2018 was the year I fought Joella and Logan Paul. I also went on tour with Randolph and then 2019 went on tour again and also fought Logan Paul again. From there straight on uh, the whole music era happened. All the way up until 2022 when I came back in August to box again and I've been boxing non-stop since. And y'all also remember throughout all these years i'm still doing sidemen videos i'm still posting on this channel i'm still collaborating with other youtubers etc so yeah i haven't really slowed down at any point since 2017 and that's probably why you know i i haven't really fallen off <laughs> and that is why I haven't posted since the fight. Okay, so I then proceeds to show clips of Tommy at parties dancing having fun, just showing how he has no rhythm, or whatever the fuck that means. And then he also proceeds to make a dig at his family, saying his wife is slaving away looking after his kid while he is training for the fight. Like, no shit, but anyway, I think slaving away is a bit of an exaggeration. All while Molly May is looking after his kid at home. I mean, come on, Tommy. You're, you're a father now. You can't be constantly partying in the club while your missus is taking care of your child. You were hardly around during Molly May's pregnancy and it seems that even after the child has been born, you're hardly around. Mate, <laughs> what the fuck? Why, why are you getting personal with his kid? You showed three clips of him at a club. I'm pretty sure two of them were from the same bloody night. <laughs> what do you mean? You want to talk about how he hasn't been there for his kid, mate? You've literally had like three fucking abortions. But KSI, if you're going to be critical and other people for being a bad parent, maybe you shouldn't kill your own kids. <laughs> Obviously, that's a joke. You had an abortion, but still, man, you don't talk about responsibility at parties. Maybe you shouldn't be getting sluts pregnant. Like, what the fuck is this guy? Integrity, my arsehole, honestly. Like, who, who the fuck does this guy think he is? Honestly, it's like, guys, listen, he's not, he's been out clubbing, he's having a good time, he's partying, and he's missus, oh, she's just at home. She's struggling. There's a baby in one hand, a vacuum cleaner in the other. You know, it's, it's, it's the hard grind. Like, what, what the fuck is this shit? Man, like this just this is just personal for like just being the sake of personal because you're upset that you lost a fight. It's just insane. Don't forget, guys, he's all about integrity. Don't forget that's tattooed permanently with ink, by the way, by a paedophile, by uh, <laughs> for permanently for life. Let's get another one from what if only Jimmy Savile was still around, maybe you could um tattoo cunt on your chest. KSI for some reason thought it would be a good look if he went after his family and go really personal with this. Because the man's ego had already expanded beyond the Milky Way, KSI also tells his fans to harass. Tommy and do what they want to him if they see him, whether that be online or in person. And if you see him publicly, you, you can berate him as well <laughs> and remind him that he didn't win. <laughs>
<laughs> Not only is this against YouTube's TOS to send your audience against someone for malicious reasons, it is very irresponsible to do so when you have millions of fans. Now, obviously this came with backlash and people were criticizing KSI for letting his ego get the better of him. KSI claimed it isn't harassment, but thankfully the YouTuber wrote ashore asked him why does he even feel the need to do this in the first place? I guess with me saying, oh, harass, not harass, <laughs> But like go on Tommy's Instagram page and say that he but lost. But why do you feel the need to say that? Well, I, I just, I think for me, it's just the annoyance of these three random people that have dictated but the what is, whole. But what does people comment on Tommy's thing change that? What do well, you I, I, I feel like I want him to be reminded that <laughs> publicly he didn't win you that You will never fight. forget the day. I don't think he realizes how deranged this actually makes him sound. So yeah, make sure you don't lose to a boxing fight from KSI fair and square. Otherwise, he's going to send a bunch of his audience to harass your family. Really standing on the integrity point, might I just add. So as we can see from this video, KSI does not stand for any of the things tattooed to his body. Knowledge, strength, and integrity. His most recent one on his back, which wasn't tattooed by a pedophile, has legacy on the back. Unfortunately, KSI does not have any legacy either. I think the next thing he should have tattooed onto his body is redemption since that's like the only way forward from here. Since at least the amount of times you can fuck up, you can always have a redemption arc. However, you can't always have integrity if you never had it in the first place. It is a shame to see since KSI was one of my favorite YouTubers growing up just to see how pathetic he's become in his old age. That old age only being 30. So hopefully throughout time he starts to be a bit humble. Although press Bruh. X to doubt. I hope you guys did enjoy this video. Please like and subscribe if you are new. Please become a channel member. It really does support me. A super thanks is appreciated but not expected. Follow my Twitter, socials down below. I've been Wacky TV. I'm until next time, my ego is bigger than care size.